The study is next to the room you're staying in. The furniture in there is uncovered. I was actually planning on moving most of it out to make it into a second guest bedroom. <laughs> Any day now. Well, it's probably for the best. Because this time you're definitely not going to be able to avoid rifling through things. Nah, mom will forgive me. I hope. There's <laughs> uh, so many places to hide something. Uh, take it one by one, and we'll see if anything jumps out. scary in miniature, no? A couple of family members were in New Zealand around the time they filmed the first movie. <laughs> uh, a souvenir from my great-grandparents' trip to Germany. <laughs> my bisabuela was a surprisingly mean shot. they got these plates over in one piece. Bisabuelo Javier was a big travel buff. He, uh, uh, he used to steal all the towels from the hotel rooms we stayed in. He'd be like, it's covered by the room fee. <laughs> he was a good man. Yeah, a bit eccentric, but uh, yeah, it was part of his charm. he had. A young intellectual. You know the type. And Javier was the last person to see him alive. But did he go join the Villistas? Or maybe he had a target on his back. Us Sotos were a pretty influential family around here before the revolution. Javier and Raul's dad would have had the ear of the local cacique, the mayor in the pocket of the federal government. Favors for favors, you know. But then, everything was shook up. I heard that when they reported the disappearance, the police, or what was left of them around that time, practically laughed in their faces. They knew Raul better than his own family, said he was probably out fighting with some bandits. But then why would he leave his shotgun behind? And how did it end up in that logbook six feet under the ground? We're clearly not done with this mystery yet, but at least we know the major players now. Let's try finding that shrine. <laughs> 